This video is about merit and demerit goods and the market failure that they cause. Merit goods are goods which are better for consumers than they realise. So if you think about vaccinations, it's not necessarily the case that people are completely ignorant of the full benefits of getting vaccinated, but they often act in a way that suggests that they are. And that's what really matters for merit goods. So the cost to go and get a flu jab is maybe £10, uh, possibly an hour of your time. But that's going to stop you from getting the flu for a year, which is a really, really nasty illness. But many people still don't bother to do that because they underestimate those full benefits. And whether they're willfully doing that or whether it's because uh, they're, they're completely ignorant of them, it doesn't really matter. What's important is they're acting in that way. With demerit goods, they're goods which are worse for consumers than they realise. So think about the example of smoking, and it's similar again. Most people kind of know the harm that it causes, but those people who smoke continue to do it anyway. So they're acting in a way that suggests they're unaware of those full harmful effects that consuming that good is doing to them. And so where does the market failure come in? Remember that market failure is where the market fails to produce an efficient allocation of resources. And as usual, we can show that market failure using a diagram. So for merit goods first, it's going to be a supply and demand diagram. And this is the initial market equilibrium shown by our demand curve in blue and our supply curve here. But if those consumers were really fully aware or fully considering the full benefits of consuming that good, then demand would be higher. Demand should really be higher for consuming those vaccinations and getting that flu jab. And we know if demand is higher, then that pushes the demand curve further to the right. So really, the market should be operating at this level here at the demand curve further to the right. If those consumers were considering those full benefits that would be gained from consuming that good. So that leaves us with this problem, which is the root of the market failure of the underconsumption of those merit goods. The market is going to leave us with a quantity of output consumed here at Q, whereas we would socially optimally want the um, market to produce the output at Q1, higher demand and at higher output for those merit goods. With demerit goods, we've got the opposite being the case. If people were fully aware or fully considering the full harm to them that consuming those goods was going to do, then our demand curve would be further to the left. This is our initial market equilibrium and considering the full harmful effects would push that demand curve down. The demand for cigarettes should really be lower than it is and the demand curve goes further to the left and then we're left with this situation of overconsumption if we leave it to the market. So Q is the market equilibrium that's produced. Q1 is the socially optimal output that we would want to be consuming if we were considering those full harmful effects.